How you guys doing? Welcome back to today's lesson 35, the basics of mental analysis. We're going to talk all about the 10 points that I want to drive home to you when it comes to how you should be behaving and thinking in the stock market. Now, this is a really good jumping off point for you to have these discussions with yourself and to further your research. I'm not going to have every single answer these next three lessons, especially this one. The next one's going to be all about outside the market things you can do to be more successful and then the third one will do the same exact kind of idea and then wrap it up together with a nice pretty bow on it what we've done so far yes my cat's in the way it's okay we have our trading plan right here all this we then have our technical analysis thank you and our fundamental analysis we're gonna add two more layers here for the mental analysis these three next lessons after that we're gonna talk about goal setting and then move into uh how to hold a stock properly, consistency, and all those kinds of great things as well. So today I have a slideshow. Are you excited about the uh, 10 things I want to really drive home with mental analysis? We'll try and make it not so like read from it. I want to just have some points on it, come back to you, go to this lens instead of the actual screen itself, and we're going to talk about mental analysis. So with that being said, let's get into it. Lesson 35, mental analysis. So I have a nice slideshow for you. We're gonna talk all about the basics of what we're looking at and what we're trying to accomplish in this lesson today. Let's look at where we're gonna be going with our uh, roadmap for the day. First is the investor mindset. After that, we're gonna talk about how to maintain wealth. Thirdly, how to actually use a trading structure, how to then adapt to fear, and then how to think in probabilities. After those five things, we'll discuss expectations, risk, objectives in this, how to obtain consistency, and then truth. These 10 things are my milestones for mental analysis. Again, you can never trade. You can use paper trading, you can use REITs, you can use mutual funds, whatever it is. But these 10 things must be applied to be as, as successful as you can possibly be. So with that being said, let's check out our first part, the investor mindset. So we have our investor mindset here. Let's talk about this as we go through it. So first is the investor mindset. I think it's really critical for someone who's an employee who's been employed their whole entire life to understand investors don't think like it's a job because it's not. The second you can break away from this being a job, like I want to quit my job to invest. You can, but you shouldn't have the same mindset. The mindset needs to be different. You're going from being an employee to a CEO. You're going from self-employed to your own CEO of being an investor. Here are some questions you have to ask yourself. Let's look. Firstly is what kind of money do you have and what kind of money can you make with it? Because again, if the longer you're in the side market, the more you know, you need money to make money. So what kind of money do you have now? What kind of small term goals can you achieve? What kind of long term goals can you achieve with that kind of money that you have now? What kind of portfolio income do you want? Dividend, uh, active or growth? How do we establish passive or investor income eventually? That's a huge goal. I think for most people it would be that. I think the most average Americans like myself would love to have an active account that they're trading, swing trading, day trading, and then that investor account of growth and dividends where you have your passive and investment income coming from. How do you eventually get to that? It should always be the end goal in my opinion. What is an asset versus liability? How do we make our stocks an asset not liability? And how do we assess risk versus reward? If you can hit these five questions, the slideshow, these five questions throughout your trading process, if you can get better at these five things and have these goals set, you'll be wildly more successful. Trust me. Without the right mental mindset and without the right structure, everything's worthless. If you have no structure mindset, you'll never reach your full potential. You may be profitable. There's plenty of traders who are profitable who are not at their maximum because they have no mental structure, right? Remember, why are you doing this? Why did you enter the market? It's always to make money, not to make friends. It's here to make profit. Our foundation, as we discussed, is risk versus reward. And eventually, build up assets to overcome paying your liabilities. To do that, we start with this. Right, we have our foundation right there. That's what's all built off of. If you don't have mental analysis, a part of that structure, you'll never reach your full potential, ever. So, after that, how do you maintain wealth? That's important to understand. And this is what's huge, is by first living below your means. We're gonna talk about this today as well, because also, it's really sad. If you have a bunch of money coming in the stock market, if you're a really good day trader, and you make like a thousand bucks a day, but then you go out your credit card and spend 1200 bucks a day, it doesn't matter how good you are. You're gonna always be in that hole. So again, to properly use your investment income and your brokerage account, you have to make sure that you live below your means. It doesn't matter how much money you make if you spend more as you make more, well, then what's the point of doing it in the first place, right? Of course, you should have some fun, but if you're not gonna actually lower your spending, you have two options when it comes to this lowering, living below your means. First, I want you to think about yourself in a room. 
kind of like this. I want you to think about the ceiling as your income that's above you. I want you to think about the floor as your expenses. You have two options if the room gets too tight. You can either raise your ceiling or lower your floor. So if you're gonna make more money in the stock market, that's raising your ceiling, you're raising your income, right? You have more room to breathe and actually do activities and have a nicer house, a bigger room. But if you also raise your expenses, you've done nothing. So of course, as we go through this lesson, as you get better with investing, make sure lifestyle creep doesn't come up and you spend more as you make more. That's the biggest enemy, right? So live below your means, obviously. Second step you need to think about is how to be efficient. Everyone who's a millionaire, a billionaire, anyone who's wealthy is efficient. To be successful, make sure you're efficient with your time, energy, and money. Of course, money makes sense, energy makes sense. Effectiveness of your time is huge though. If you're gonna just buy a stock and watch it all day, like, oh, that's moving. You're gonna have a horrible lack of efficiency with your time. So make sure you use your time properly, allocated towards productive things, and not worrying and watching your swing trade for five days as it does what it's gonna do regardless if you watch it or not, right? It's gonna get to where it's going no matter what. Stop watching and stop killing yourself. It doesn't make any sense. So people's lives don't 100% go around work, but they are smart and budget their time properly. They also use their time wisely and pay for tools that open up their time for themselves. Massive thing to think about, right? I do pay for FinViz Premium. I do pay for Tiffering's Premium. They make my life easier, but by spending that money, I make that money back quicker because I actually gain something from it. And so I may pay 30 bucks a month, but it helps me make 300 bucks a month. It kind of makes sense, right? Sometimes you gotta pay a service to make your life easier. We all have the opportunity cost of time throughout the day, and what you choose to use your time on is critical. So make sure you're efficient, obviously. After that, Financial freedom is more important than social status. Of course, smart investors and successful people know financial freedom and security is more important than social statuses and artifacts. You may really want the newest Corvette. I want the newest Corvette, but I also know that the stability and the safety and security I'm building with my long-term investment portfolios and taking my time to do all this is much more important than impressing any stranger at a stop sign. When's the last time you saw someone at a stoplight and thought, wow, that guy's really cool? Probably never. Honestly, you probably think they're a douchebag, to be honest with you. So going for social statuses, bigger homes, bigger whatever, never the answer. I think having security and safety is definitely paramount compared to being cool or flashy to other people, right? So beyond social statuses, a lot of folks who are successful also have no parental support. Uh, if you're gonna be successful, be profitable, you have to do this independently. There's no trust fund babies. There's no safety nets. You create your own wealth through the proper channels of compounding interest, invest money that's left over, budgeting, spending less than you make, all these kinds of things. If you're only successful because your parents support you, congratulations, that's good for you. But folks like us have to do it ourselves. And if you have support from your parents, when that dries up, all of this you're doing means absolutely nothing. So make sure you guys have uh, good plans that don't have your parents' support built in because they may not be there for much longer. You never know. Lastly, they also target opportunities and they have the right occupation. Most folks who are considered successful with a proper investor mindset and proper structure know an opportunity when they see it. This goes into micro like OTC tickers and small tickers to buying ETFs to actions in their lives. They know exactly when something's a good deal, a bad deal, a good opportunity, or a bad opportunity. They don't take from the market, they don't take from others, they make themselves available for what opportunities present themselves. That's huge. They also have the right occupation. A lot of folks have not high college debt. They also make sure that the job they have they like, but they know that instead of doing a job that you love for no money, they just have a high paying job they may hate to then afford things that they love. So having a good op good so having a good job, creating your own job is paramount in being successful as well, especially in the stock market. So beyond that, we're gonna talk about a trading structure. This is what this whole class has been about basically, right? As we've talked about, there's a difference between a trading system and a trading structure. As I've talked about throughout this class, and just to clarify, your trading system, I'll grab the pieces, your trading system, uh, this uses kind of wheel because wheels go back and forth. This trading system can change. That's the difference. You can change this in and out. I can take any colored Lego piece, any wheel or some little dude's head, whatever it is, this can change. This can be the multiple time frames that I use, like I only use 180 day, well, I can now use, you know, the 10 day, the 20 day. Oh, I want to swing, scalp, whatever it is. You can change this. That's your trading system. This that we're building is your trading structure. These do not change. You don't just say, hey, for this trade, I'm just going to, I don't need a plan. 